Anybody missing? <laughs> We're going to go to Mary's wake, and she's not even going to be in the coffin. Right, any questions just while we're waiting for these one or two people to come? Everybody happy enough with it so far? Yeah? So, yeah, this is what we're talking about. What course book had you got? Did you have the Song of Prayer? Yeah, it's edition three of the course. You see, this is you know this is the problem with so many books out there now of the course. There are people using I think Bill Tetford's version because it's got soul in it. Do you know where soul was replaced in the foundations one with spirit? You know I think because of religions religious connotations or whatever. But you see that's all kind of. You know, words. What's this word mean? What's that word mean? And this word, we'll have to put in this word. Like, you know, it's all kind of form. Like, you know. Well, you see, you have, <coughs> you have the 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 text. You have the workbook. Then you have the manual. Then you have the psychotherapy, and then you have the uh, song of prayer, and they're all in the third edition of the Foundation of Peace. You know. So. Should it stay in the beginning now? Uh, I had a green one before. Right. A green one. A paper one. No, you see, you see, you don't have it. You'll find, you'll find it. Yeah. I'll just say now. Okay, folks. It's just going back here. There's a few people. <coughs> there's a few people have um, just talking about and showing me their books, and they don't have uh, the song of prayer and the psychotherapy, okay, in those books. And this is what I've been talking about. That you know, I don't want everybody going out now and having to buy another book. You'll find this online, and you can print it off online. I think there's a CIM search searchable. So what you have is you have the whole course, everything is on there, the Song of Prayer, Psychotherapy, everything's on there. So you can just copy and paste it into Word or whatever and just put it into the back of your book, do you know? Okay, and the Psychotherapy pamphlet, do you know? So it is important because, do you know, it's important for, you know, level two that we had been discussing, you know, because the ego right mind is all in the end of that book, yeah? So we'll continue. Okay, the conditions. We're back in the cake for the third level, the state of mind. Okay, and this is one mindedness. All right, and one of the conditions and the main condition, right, of one mindedness is to be without judgment. And you might have seen this all over the course, right? You have judgment and then you move to non judgment. Okay, so on this level here, I am judgmental and now I am non judgmental. Well, being non-judgmental is not the same as being without judgment. Why? <coughs> but something more important? Yeah. Something more important? Something more important? If I'm saying I'm non I'm non judgmental, what I'm really saying is you're judgmental and I'm separating myself now from those who are judgmental. So in this mind, okay, I am judgmental. Okay? In this mind I am non judgmental, which is a lovely step to be. But you're now again it's a belief and it's also that you're saying I am different, I am separate from those people who are judgmental. Okay. Without judgment means without rejection of anybody or anything, okay? 
And what that means is you can have us sitting on here studying A Course in Miracles. And you could have people in nor next door um, studying Satan, okay? Or people down the corridor studying <coughs> Buddhism. People up here studying Jews, Jewism, or whatever covered like topic, right? So the whole point of this is every one of these sections of beliefs, we're all separating ourselves from everybody else, okay? We judge, we Christians, we judge that we've got the truth, do you know? This is what Christianity is saying, like we have the truth, everybody else doesn't have the truth. So we're se separate, and we're, we're special, and we're the only ones who've got it right. So here, to be without judgment means to be without rejection of anybody, no matter what their beliefs are. Okay? That's without judgment. There's no I am. There's no I am. There is no I in this. Okay? Because in oneness, okay, if there's an I in it, then what you're really saying is I'm separate from God. And there's no separation from God. There's no identity. You know, um, in Christ, I am Christ, even stimulates or stipulates that we're separate from God. I am Christ. Okay? Because when we're at one with God, okay, in oneness, there can be no I. All right? So every belief that you hold about yourself separates and divides you from somebody or something. Isn't that correct? Okay, so without judgment means without rejection. So when you're basically reading the course and you come across judgment, what you're really doing is you're rejecting a part of yourself. So on this level too, what we do is we reject the I am guilty to I am the guiltless. I am sinful. Now we become I am sinless. So we're rejecting this sin. And this is very important at this level because what Jesus says is we need to sort out what's true and what's illusion. <coughs> so it's not, you know, what we're really doing is we're separating from our ego at this level. So you can only transcend and separate from what you know, okay? So what we need to do is we need to know what's true and what's, what's false, okay? So this level is very, very important, okay? But ultimately what we have to do is we have to leave this level and move up here. Okay, so because what happens is this true right mind comes up here now. Okay, so the more right minded you become, the more you bring yourself up to this level. You see, A Course in Miracles is a progression. It's, it's, it's not meant to be stuck on this level for the next 100, 200, or 300 years. Okay, it's a progression getting us back into oneness. Okay, so there's no reason that there's anybody who, in this room or anywhere else in the world, who's studying A Course in Miracles, who's not studying A Course in Miracles, can't be one-minded. Okay, all you have to do is be willing to give up all your beliefs. Simple. Yeah. No, no beliefs. Not even in God. No believing in God. Okay, God doesn't want you to believe in Him. He wants you to know Him. Okay? And you can only have an experience through knowing, not believing. Okay? It can't be. Because to hold a belief, you're separating. It's like, I believe in God. What about the people who don't believe in God? You're separating yourself from now from the non-believers. Yeah, well, I know. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. It's a belief. <laughs> Do you know? And, you know... Like what Jesus says in the Course, the, the, the atheist is closer to God than the martyr. Why is that? Well, yeah, beliefs, but the martyr basically thinks that, you know, I'm, I, God wants me to suffer. If I suffer enough, he's going to, you know, let me into the party, you know? So the atheist doesn't even believe God has anything to do with this world. You know, I can't believe God has anything to do with this world. So he's closer to the truth because he's closer with, without that belief, do you know? Because you can believe that you're here to suffer, or you can believe that you're here to experience, you know, separation and experience special relationships and all of that. But ultimately, you're going to have to give up those beliefs, if you so choose. Okay? So on this second condition, right, what we're doing is we're moving beyond beliefs. Because beliefs, and especially religious beliefs, and beliefs about yourself, you know, that you're a body, okay, that you can die, 
that you can get sick. All of these are very, very powerful thoughts. They're all very powerful beliefs. And as long as you hold on to them, then you basically will die and you will get sick. Because that's what you believe about yourself. You know? And you can equally believe that you're eternal, that you're immortal, that you can't get sick. And because you put your belief into that, which is right mindedness, then you won't get sick. You won't die. So everything comes down to what you believe in. But ultimately, right, what we're trying to do is move up to this level with beyond beliefs. Also, beyond thoughts. OK? Because all beliefs come from thoughts. Isn't that true? You can't have a belief in something without actually bringing it into a concept. You can't have a concept without actually having a stream of thoughts to build that concept. I think it's in chapter 31 where Jesus says, you know, that uh, the world was uh, made by a concept and it's kept in place by a concept. And I teach in concepts. Why is that? Because there's certain concepts that, that we have been conditioned with in our beliefs. So to undo those concepts, I've been teaching another set of concepts to replace those concepts. But ultimately, all concepts must be, again, moved beyond. Okay. Can, can one go to a hypnotist and say, it's like, the, uh, I want to uh, quit smoking, I want to quit beliefs. Would you believe him to uh, hypnotize me and get rid of all beliefs? If you believed him, yeah. No, but uh, no, but <laughs> there's only one belief. I, I really, there is. We talked about this. I don't think you were here the last month, were you? Oh, oh you were. Where does all beliefs stream from? Thoughts. We did this last month. All right. Where does all belief stream? Where does everything originate from? Every problem you've ever had has come from what? I am. Okay. Our wish to be separate, our wish to have our own identity. Everything streams from the I am. Okay, I am fearful. Okay? You take the I am out of the equation. Fear cannot stand on its own. I am guilty. Okay? Take the I am out and guilt means nothing. It only means something when you identify yourself with that. Okay? I am in love. Okay. What's wrong with that? I am in love. I am love. There's a difference. Okay. Because it's the ultimate truth. And that truth will move you beyond that truth to love. So when you lose the identity of I am, you become love. It's the only one that's there. Okay. So everything, like you're saying, there's millions of beliefs. But they all come from the one source is your willingness, your desire, and your wish to be separate, individual, unique from everybody else. <coughs> so it's not about, you know, going and sorting out this belief and looking at this belief and that belief. When you take the I am out of the equation, everything else falls apart. It's impossible that it can stand on its own. <coughs> yeah? Formless prayer. What is that? You have read about it in the course. What is the... What is the concept of formless prayer? You're not praying for something. Being. No. You were right the first time, just without adding on the story. Being. Okay? That's the, what we talked about. This, do you know what I mean? As you be yourself. That's the ultimate prayer and gift that you can give to God. You don't need to say anything. You don't need to ask for anything. You don't need to basically have any attachment to anything, okay? You just be, you know? And this is what Eckhart Tolle and Muji and all of those are talking and discussing about as just being, okay? And then everything else takes care of itself. You don't need to do anything, yeah? Silent meditation, okay? We're all experts now on this, aren't we? Yeah? Don't need to talk about this. 
And again, silent meditation is not going in to do anything, to ask for anything, to need anything, to desire anything. It's just formless prayer. It's just being. Total acceptance of what? What is? Okay. And what is? What is is? Right? It's reality. So what we're trying to do as the I am, we're trying to change reality all the time. We're always trying to uh, create a new identity for ourselves. So let's say someone who was a Catholic, a Christian, right? I don't want to be a Catholic Christian anymore. I want to be spiritual. Okay? Now that sounds good, doesn't it? Problem with being I am spiritual is now, you, what about the people who are non-spiritual? You're separating and dividing yourself again. You've created a new identity to yourself. And it probably will make you feel a lot more better than you were a Catholic or a Christian. Do you know? And one um, religion, we'll call it a religion, I don't see it as religion as Buddhism. It's on the rise. Do you know? Uh, Christianity is on the way down, Buddhism is on the way up. Do you know? Within the ego thought system, it really doesn't matter because there's division, there's separation. Okay? So the total acceptance is accepting reality of what is. Not always saying, right, what we want to do is we think we want reality as it should be, as it could be, as we desire it to be. Okay? This is what the dream is all about. We're always trying to say, right, I know what's better. And this really, the root cause of not accepting what is, is the, the authority problem. Okay? that we think we can do a better job, you know. God didn't do a great job. We can do a better job. So every time that you want a new identity is you're looking to be your own author, you want to recreate yourself, you want to be reborn as this new person with this new belief and this, this new identity as this or this or this. And this is why religion has fragmented and fragmented and fragmented and will continue to fragment. I think there are 25,000 different religious uh, forms of religion out there, and it will continue that way as long as people basically want to keep redesigning a new identity for themselves. And ultimately here, the, the, the final and probably the most difficult one to give up is the relinquishment of self, or the I am. Okay? In the course, if you read the development of trust, there's three stages that we go through. Okay? First stage is the undoing part in level two. Okay, we're undoing now our ego raw mind. Okay? Second stage is the sorting out, where we're sorting out the truth from illusions. And the third stage is the relinquishment. And what that means is the relinquishment of beliefs, the I am, thoughts, all of that. And what that does, when you go through those three stages, those three stages bring you into this level. Okay, so these are the conditions, okay, to be of the one mind. This is the enlightened mind. Imagine walking this world, okay, with <coughs> never the thought of fear again. Never the thought of guilt. No worries. Okay? This is, this is what's waiting for you, you know. And there's a choir of angels there that's going to sing you the whole way home through this. You know, so when you see, oh, I have to do a 15-minute meditation now, like, you know, you know oh, oh, I have to do this, and I have to do, do you, know? you know? What you're really saying is, like, I'm in hell, and I want to stay in hell. Do you know? And for those people who have touched that bliss, do you know what I mean? Now you know. You know you don't believe anymore that it's there. You know that it's there. So all you have to do is just undo those little blocks that we were doing in the earlier break, okay, about why you're getting caught, why you're being pulled into this uh, <coughs> ego thought system again, okay, that's why. So you work with those. Is there any teaching or any questions on that? Those, this is what we're going to spend the rest of the year doing, is reinforcing this and reinforce this, okay? Because Even though, okay, you've you went through the last month of the meditations, primarily those meditations, there was a number of things going on in them. And one of them was basically 
to observe yourself, to become more observant. And the other one was to get you to still the mind down. Stop mind wandering. Stop allowing the ego to just to fill your day so busy, so busy, so busy. Okay? So one person rang me up and says, I'm not doing this right. I'm a fake. Okay? I can't do this right and I can't do that right. I'm just a fake. And I said to her, well, how do you know? And then she copped on. She observed her own fakeness. And then she says, everybody's a fake. Even the Pope's a fake. And then she was happy. But she would never have come to that state of thinking or that thought unless she began the process of observing herself. Yeah? So that's what it's about here. Yeah? And then another person, okay, who will not remain nameless, all right, last Tuesday night decided to give me a call. They asked me a couple of questions on Skype, and we got chanting, and I says, uh, how are you getting on with the meditations? Ah, oh, she says, after three days, I never bothered about them. She says, I've been doing this for the last two years. You know? Margaret, would you like to come up and tell the story? <laughs> no, come up, come on up, come on up. Just speak into the mic, yeah. yeah. It's just, you know, I could say it, but people, you know, I, I want this to be real because this is your experience. Okay. So, yeah, this is exactly, I rang Michael to find out when the meeting was taking place. And just like he said, he said, you know, how's it going? And I said, oh, yeah, it's going good, sure. Like, I've been doing that for years. And, um, yeah, I've been observing myself, and I've done all this training, and I've done mindfulness, and I've done uh, years of training. And, yeah, it's good. And he says, really? <laughs> and I said, yeah. And, um, uh, and we got talking. And as, I, as, as Michael was explaining, <coughs> He said, you know, I did tell you that resistance will come up. And I said, no, there's no resistance. You know, I've just done it. You know, that's, there's no resistance there. And uh, he said, OK. He said, um, it'll come as fear. It's not coming as fear. And it'll also come as cunning. Cunning. And I thought, right, OK. Uh, my ego, I've seen now, duped me, conned me, and was totally cunning. So <coughs> I saw arrogance as well arrogance. Oh sure, I've been doing it. I know, I know what I'm doing. And also, um, and then as Michael said about baking the cake, <coughs> I realized I wasn't even following the recipe. No way was I following the recipe. I was putting in my own ingredients and um, my own everything. Temperature, the lot. No wonder it was just coming out pure flat. <laughs> so um, I saw the arrogance and, and I saw how the ego is so cunning because that's what it was doing and um, I, I, they, it was just totally conning me. So <coughs> I accepted totally the recipe and I also remembered to um, my daughter's words often said to me, Mum, RTI, read the instructions. Yeah, because this is something that I don't do either. And uh, so I went back and uh, I read the instructions that we were given. And I followed them to the letter. E even down, I thought, do I need to take my shoes and socks off? But she goes, oh, no, no I, I'm following this exactly. And I did. <coughs> and all I can say is <coughs> the result was amazing. Um, it was something like I have never experienced before. I, I touched the expansiveness, the, uh, it was like all knowing. I, I knew I was trees, I was nature, I was everything, and I was everywhere, and it was powerful. And that, that's it. And, and the next day, even, I was buzzing. My, my whole um, body, was, I felt the vibration, and uh, I'm just totally changed since. And now I, I do know, and I'm able to sort of, I'm in the process of letting go all beliefs and everything, because yeah, I, from, from that one time of following the recipe, reading the instructions, I do know. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Margaret. So there is a lesson there for us, okay? Do you know, this is not me telling you my experiences. There are other people out there also have had very powerful experiences, okay? But a little glimpse, Yes.
Do you know? So it's uh, you know the, w w what's so powerful about Margaret's was like that if you think you know this already, all right, you're not going to do it, and that's what the ego just loves. Oh, listen, I've been doing this like you know, but you're doing it the ego's way, and that's what the ego's right mind is all about. Oh, you're doing this. Don't worry about it. Do you know? If you're not getting experience, it'll come. You know, just be patient. It'll come. It'll come. You know, and it never comes. You know, so you have to set the conditions, and then it just happens. Okay, if you go into this space, all right, it just happens. But you you have to go in totally naked. You know, there are no beliefs, no thoughts, no desire, no wants. All right, you're not expecting anything. You're not demanding anything. All right, you just follow the instructions on this, and basically, what's going to happen? It's just going to happen by itself for no reason. And then that's where you're going to know exactly. Because the people who have had these experiences, they can't tell me a reason why it happened. And that's why I know. OK? It's just happening. Yeah? So for those people who are baking their own cakes, all right, and I know a good few of them, all right, that's OK. OK? Continue baking your own cake. See how you get on. You know, because it's only through you know, not doing this and uh, is that you're going to come to one day and say, right, what I'm doing doesn't work. There has to be another way. And this is, you know, this is just one of another ways. I'm not saying what I'm, what, what I'm saying to you is here is the only way and it's the, the way and uh, you have to do it. No, I'm far from saying that. But what I am saying is if you want this, okay, this is one way that you can do this. Yeah? So quickly, I'm just going to move on now before we go into next month's. And it's basically about the awakening, okay? We have had one person, okay, who has had. So in this process of awakening, right, there's not one awaken awakening that takes place. There's a series <coughs> of awakenings. Because all of these are dreams within dreams. And what we do is we wake up one at a time. And for those people who have been coming here for the last couple of years, you'll be aware of this. But there's new people here. And I just thought it would be very important to show the process of the awakening. So one of the first things you come to is a self-awakening, all right? And that's where you know, you're coming to the point of saying, right, you know, this doesn't make sense. You know, who I am does not make sense. Uh, you, know, you probably won't even be aware of this. But you go on a search then, and you go into a, a bookstore or whatever, and you're looking for answers, all right? You're no longer caught up in this world's great or this world's hell or whatever. Like, you know, there, there's something has triggered off within you. It says, right, you know, there has to be more to this, OK? And then you become self-conscious, all right? And that means now you, you start to become aware of what you're doing. And it's kind of, you know, at this level here, you know, at level one. Or it can be at this level, level two. OK, you're becoming more aware that there's another way, there's another mind, there's another way of doing this. OK? And then what happens, you have a spiritual awakening. OK? And that awakening, basically what that means is now you're becoming awake to your true inner nature as spirit. You don't believe it anymore. Now you know it. You've got a glimpse of it. OK? And there are people who have had spiritual awakenings and has returned back down into the world fast asleep. Okay? Because it's been very fearful for them. And it's like you having that experience of bliss. Do you know? You can either look at that and say, that was very fearful, I don't want that yet. You're just not ready for it yet. But what it has shown is that, you know, there is this is the way. You know, there is, this is available to you. Okay? So what happens after your spiritual awakening, you become spiritual conscious. Okay? You start to live a spiritual life. And it's not about, you know, uh, I think Eckhart Tolle you know, wrote that spiritual, being spiritual is a level of consciousness. Okay? It's not about what you read in a book. It's an inner knowing. Okay? So what now you become conscious of the spiritual laws. Like in this world, you know, there's physical laws that rule us, which are the ego's laws. In spirit, there's spiritual laws. Can anybody tell me a spiritual law? One of them is oneness. Okay? Now you'll know, right, that basically, you know, you're not separate from me. I'm at one with you. How I see you 
is how I see myself. You'll also know is what I think of you is what I think of myself. And you'll also, what I say to you, I'm truly saying to myself. And one of the biggest ones in, sp in spiritual uh, that you'll become conscious of is that you can only truly give to yourself. So when you, you give to receive. So if you want love, you give love. Here, what we do is we take. You know, when we go into our loving relationship, we take all the specialness, we take all the love, and sometimes we'll give some back. You know, if we're in a good mood. Okay? But in spirit, okay, you know, the more love that you project out, the more love that comes back to you. Then there's the higher self-awakening. Okay? That is where you move into a higher state of consciousness. This is where the Buddha awoke when he says, I am awake. And you go into the higher states of consciousness here, where the two become one, what Jesus talks about. And when the two become one, you're basically into the Christ awakening. And this is the one. Christ consciousness is the oneness. Okay? So you could look at what we're doing here. These two become one and the observer here. Okay? And when the two become the one, you awaken into Christ consciousness, which is the complete oneness of the whole entire sonship of everything. And then you're only in here for the blink of an eye, like the Course describes it, the real world. Okay? You're in the real world, and then you have your divine awakening. Okay? And this is where you wake up from the dream completely. And here you're back to the bliss. And that's the process up the ladder as you'll read in the course. Okay? Well, I only know one person who got to this level in the physical body. And I know one person who's got to this level in the physical body. Does anybody know who they are? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they always said that, you know, the Buddha basically was uh, Jesus in his previous life. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. So, yes, and what Jesus says in the Course, and he says it very clearly, what I can do, you can do, and much more. And off the top, divine consciousness, that's you. That's me. That's me. Yeah. Okay. So then... Here, again, what the whole dream is about. In this level three teachings, right? Do you know the way that the separation, we were in heaven, all right? We ate the apple and blah, 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 yeah. all right? We were kicked out of heaven. We went through all of that, projection, all of that. Then you might have seen my video that I did on YouTube about the metaphysics of separation, okay? Where we go through here with Jesus, a new set of beliefs that we chose to leave heaven and all of that. All right? And we go down through the same separation. Well, in level three, right, the separation has another meaning. Okay? And basically, everything in this level here is pure cause and effect. So this is the separation, the dream of separation here. Here, we have the dream. Here, the, co the effect of us having that dream is now we project ourselves out here as separate. One. Okay? The cause or the effect of that is remember what we do is we project, we fragment the whole dream as a dream of projection and fragmentation. That's endless. Okay? So the effect of our projection of ourselves to this level and to the dream is we fragment in here. So you could say, remember we talked about Adam and Eve. All right? And the effect of that is that fragments and projects itself again here, where it goes into billions. This would be the spiritual universe. And the effect of that is into the body, into the physical world. Okay? And it's all cause and effect. Once we started the dream, everything else happened automatically. Okay? There was no story in all of this. Do you know the story in the Bible? You know, we're in Garden of Eden and we ate the apple and then <coughs> Eve, Eve basically made me do it and Adam blamed Eve and 
all of this, then it was Cain and Abel that killed each other and blah, 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 blah. Set of beliefs, okay? And then in the course, we come with a whole new story, all right? And this story is basically to correct the story that the ego has written. And again, that story is not true. This is the true story. It's just pure cause and effect. So the question you're asking then is why this has happened? Isn't this the one on everybody's lips? Yeah? Did it happen? Now who's sitting here then? Why are you sitting here? Yeah. Yeah. You believe you're here. That's why you're here. Okay. So what this is really all about, we have to go back to the post separation. What what happened before just before the dream. Who are we? And there are three facts that we know and they're coming from the course. And one of the facts is that we have never been conscious. We have never <coughs> known ourselves of who we are. And the other fact we know is we have never known God. Okay? And the other fact we know is basically we do know bliss. It's a state of being. Because that's all we have ever experienced in heaven to date <coughs> is bliss. It's kind of like when you look into um, <coughs> a pram or whatever, you see this little baby in there, like, you know, and it's just in a state of bliss. You know? It has no beliefs, it has no self awareness of who it is or anything else, but it's just in that state of bliss. You know, and it's more so in a state of bliss when before it's born than after it's born. Do you know? But that's who we are. This is what it's really all about. Is you know in the morning time before you waken up, all right, you have a dream. Has everybody experienced that? Okay, and sometimes the dream is a nightmare. Okay? But just before you waken up, you start to dream, and then you waken up, and then you pay no attention on it. All right? You, you know, say if you have dreamed that you have killed somebody or somebody, you've done something badly wrong, do you carry on all day thinking, you know, how badly you've acted in the dream? No? This is the same scenario, okay? This is a dream, and what we're doing is we're awakening up into our own consciousness. And just before, all right, we're waking up, we're having a dream about waking up. Yeah? And the, the dream, this dream, is to sort out one thing and one thing only. The authority problem. Imagine, right, <laughs> I'm putting this in there. Imagine if we all just woke up in heaven as we are here. What would that do to heaven? Would heaven be heaven then? Yeah? Because there's one thing, you see, God extended himself purely through us. So inside, this is where the authority problem is. Inside, we secretly believe we're all God. We're all individual gods. All right? And we all know what's right. And we all know the best way to do this. So let's say that we all woke up in heaven as we are here. There would be blood. <laughs> you know, it would be mayhem. Sure, look what we've done here. You know, word wires, atomic bombs, killing shit and everything. Because we all want to be God. We all want to be the one. Yeah, but, uh, just going back on that dream, I, two nights ago I had a dream, and in the dream I was on a bus, and uh, the bus man on the bus conductor came over and asked me to, for the fare, and I, I, I couldn't put my hand into my pocket to get the money out. And then I woke up, and, the, and, the, and, and then I, I, I formed the conclusion that be, because it was a dream, I could not act in the dream. I could not do anything in the dream. Mm -hmm. Yet if you say this is a dream, how I can put, I can put my hand in my pocket Right, so you, what you're really saying is you don't believe you're dreaming. Well, in a dream you can't, can't act. In, in this dream, how can we act then? Because there's a big difference between both dreams. What's the difference? This is the collective dream of here, the one mind. This is why it's so powerful. It's the one dreamer dreaming all of this. In your nighttime dream, you are a little sig single fragment here having your own individual dream at night. This is why it seems to be all over the shop. You know, this is why it seems to be, you know, sometimes you can remember it. It mightn't be very clear. It mightn't be, you know, this. You'll pick up fragments of it. Okay. Okay. Remember, us here as one Christ, okay, is a very, very, very 
that is the most powerful being that there is. Okay, so this whole dream is one collective consciousness of the one collective dreamer up here. But the whole dream has become fragmented. But each one of these bodies, each one of these spirits, is the whole inside of it. So you, when the Course talks to you, you, when Jesus is saying you in the Course, he's talking to you as you here, you, the dreamer. He's not talking to you as you, the body, who's in the middle of the dream. This is the hero. You might have read the hero in the dream. And the hero in the dream is the body. Okay? Does that answer your question, my friend? <laughs> Again, it goes back to beliefs. You know, what you're really saying behind that question is, I believe I'm here. You know, and it's very hard for us to give up that belief. Yeah? But ultimately, what we're going to do is we're going to waken up, and the only way we can waken up here is one, as we become one here. Isn't that beautiful? So when we do waken up with one, we're not going to have a problem with it, anybody. We're not going to have a problem with God. So this whole dream is about finding ourselves. You ever hear that spiritual people talk about go and find yourself? Yeah, this is the self that they're asking you to find. This is the self they're asking you to know. But you must know all of these the way up the ladder because you can only transcend what you know. So to know thyself here is to know thy body and know this is not who I am. To know thyself here in spirit is to know, right, I am not an individual <coughs> unit of this. I am the whole, I am the tire, I am Christ. Here, the two become one, which is basically the joining of everything here and here become one to here. What about a hat? It's, <laughs> it's the only little symbol I could find on my, on my software, do you know? No, <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. Okay, then. Anybody any questions on that? So what we're really doing is here, we're waking up here, we're waking up this level, we're waking up this level, we're waking up this level, we're waking up, and we're waking up here as well.